Hello friends, my name is Christopher. It's the 1st of May 2020 and uh, this is what's growing in Wisconsin. Doodly do 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 yeah! So first off, uh, this is not all that's growing in Wisconsin. Uh, I'm in zone 5A. Wisconsin is comprised of five different zones and of course I'm not growing everything that can be grown here. So there's your spoiler warning, but I'm showing you what I am doing. This year, um, well, backtrack, for longtime subscribers, in years past I've done different garden tours. Last year I did it every single week and that's pretty much the only content I put out for like eight months. This year I'm just going to do an update at the beginning of every month and I'm going to show you everything that I'm growing. Not just vegetables, but the trees and the flowers should be pretty good, right? Second important thing, I'm going to use the term greening up. That means, you know, putting, pushing out leaves and uh, going from brown to green. My wife hates that term. So let's go see what's greening up. Well, this is my peach tree. It's my pride and joy. Um, it's beautiful. It's four years old. It's got to be nine feet tall and it's fantastic. The base is probably two or so inches in diameter. I started it from a bare root whip and it's pushing out um, some greenery and I have thousands of buds on here. Each of these little blips are going to be flowers. So assuming the weather stays pretty decent um, and we have good pollinators flying around, I think this is the first year we're going to get peaches. And then here we have a Macintosh apple tree. I have two apple, two pear, and one peach. This is also pushing out greenery, which you can see here at the end. All these green slash beige tips, those all leaves that they're pushing out. However, my apples and my pears were girdled uh, at the very end of winter this year, way above the like 20 inch, 24 inch protectors I have. I don't know if it was a raccoon or what the heck did it. So I'm nervous. Um, three of the four that were girdled are pushing out greenery. And um, I don't know, I'm optimistic about that, but I've also read that girdled plants can still push out leaves for a year but then they'll be dead at the end of this year and they won't come back next year so I don't know what to expect. However, as you can see right here, I did do a quadruple bypass. I did a four cardinal direction ridge graft on each of the trees that were girdled. And now they're not girdled all the way down to the base. The girdling starts here and in this case goes from here to here about 12 inches which is nasty and it's not complete but anyways, I did four bridge grafts per tree and I'm hoping that the tissues here, excuse me, will turn into the xylem that this needs for appropriate nutrient transport and these trees are going to come back. Otherwise, the garden's going to look a lot different next year. The perennials are doing their thing, which is what we'll look at first. Here, of course, we have raspberries, my heart of hearts. These are the, um, just the heirloom red raspberries, really quite lovely. Um, these will fruit twice and we should get a first harvest as early as the end of June. Um, really looking very, very healthy. At this time I'm also getting the new shoots from the roots that are coming up. So this month I will transplant those and just kind of fill in the spaces that get dead in here. These canes last for three years. And as you can kind of see, this year I trimmed the top of all of my raspberries. So it will be fun to watch them grow throughout the year. So you always kind of wonder what's going to survive and what's not going to survive when you try something new. This is a currant I planted last year, survived like a peach, greening up, looking great, should grow. This is year number two. This was a lingonberry that I planted this time last year. It was about this big and green and beautiful and this year it looks like uh, this. So I'm going to say this is dead. And in here I have a blueberry a blue crop blueberry and an American cranberry. The cranberry is green. The blueberry looks like it might put through some buds, um, but this suffered some pretty bad animal damage over the winter time, like the end of winter again. Something got in here and just like gnawed off the ends of all of last year's new growth. It really ticked me off. So I think this winter I'm going to put cages around these and cross my fingers. It's the same story for the gooseberry. Like these were out to here with last year's new growth and it just got eaten. So far less greenery this year than this time last year. I hope I get fruit. 
I'm sure I'll be pleasantly surprised, but way more gray dead bits here than there were for me last year this time. So uh, this is a four-year-old plant. It needed trimming anyways, and I guess what doesn't have greenery on it in a couple months is going to get snipped and allow the new stuff to grow on through. I know gooseberries and currants are supposed to be kind of like an open inverted cone when you prune it. Um, so I did some pruning after the animals ate it and I did open this up. We'll see what results that yields. The rhubarb behind me is terrific. This is actually bigger than it was this time last year. I'll probably start harvesting that bits and pieces already next week for some rhubarb pie. That one's growing a little bit more slowly. They're two different kinds of rhubarb, but uh, doing great. Rhubarb is hard to kill, you know, it got some nice healthy grounds. Now we talk about seeds that are already in the ground. These two beds are the ones that I built last fall through all of my composted greens and stuff in the bottom to decompose. And then earlier uh, this past month in April, I filled them in with a mixture of native soil and peat moss and uh, perlite and compost. So these will grow really nicely and settle and everything else. It's what I've got in my other beds. It's kind of a my version of Mel's mix, you know. Uh, here I have spinach already seeded and it's slowly starting to come up. Behind me I've got radishes over there. And th well, maybe, hmm, these might be carrots. Those are radishes and that's spinach behind me. Uh, they're coming up slower than they were last year. At the end of April and throughout the whole month of May in 2019, it was cold and rainy. And all that rain made my raspberries go crazy, probably my gooseberry too, as well as all the um, early cold hardy seeds. So these are coming up later than they did last year, which always makes me nervous, you know? It's like, oh, did my seeds die off? Do I have to reseed again? We shall find out. Anyways, the radishes are coming up because the radishes, they have like a 29 day germination cycle, but. Um, potatoes, Red Norlands over here. Same method as I did last year. That's been a hugely successful video for me. My no dig uh, potato plus the like 90 day afterward follow up video when I was harvesting. So these are underneath there. Got a big pile of leaves and a big pile of compost on it. And probably in the next, you know, June video, we'll see lots of uh, green shoots coming out of there. Mint is in one of my barrels. Want to see the barrels? I kind of went barrel crazy this year. So again, not much to look at right now because it's just empty barrels. They're not all empty. This one is the uh, rampaging mint uh, from last year that I dug up and put in one of these, which is great because you can't kill mint and it can go crazy and fill this whole sucker up. That's just fine. I split a rain barrel in half this way for the first time to try something new. I got one over here and one over there that you saw and I'm growing linen, a linen, linseed. That's pretty cool. So we'll see how that grows. One of those kind of rabbit holes that I went down over the winter time. My sister-in-law started sending me videos of people growing their own linen, then spinning their own yarn from it. It's really, really cool. I watched a lot of 40 minute documentaries with Irish and Scottish women. Anyways, we'll see how that grows. It's always good to experiment with things. So over here, this is the old giant mulberry stump that's slowly been decomposing because I've been putting compost and stuff on it and cutting up all the suckers and this and that. Full of tiger lilies. Looks awesome. To the untrained eye, this bed might look depressing and empty, but it's actually really full. You can see the strawberries, of course. These were assorted things given to me of multiple varieties, some from my neighbor, some from community members after I put out a Facebook post saying, hey, if you don't want to grow strawberries anymore, give them to me. And they did. So I've got a dozen or so plants in here and some runners that are forming full plants. So this will fill up nicely. And I co-planted the strawberry with the asparagus. Now here we are on May 1st. Last year I didn't even plant the asparagus until like the second week of May. So we didn't start seeing greenery until the end of May or June. But Take a look, this is some purple asparagus, which is the first to pop up. Looks like we got one, two, three, four, and more down there. The uh, regular green asparagus is a little bit slower right here. You can kind of see a little dongle waving. That's some normal green asparagus. It's coming up everywhere. looks like, I think I had 14 plants at the end of last year, and I'm hoping that 
you know, most of those come back. If I'm at 12 or 13, I will be a happy camper. And this whole chunk here is a really big deal. Plumois. Mayan frame? Sure. So, well, you can see we've got the old Egyptian walking onions in the back. They're the tall, very confluent section. Um, they're like scallions, you know, when you pull them up, or they're great green onion substitutes. And then you can see the scapes of uh, garlic. I planted, I think, five rows, really close, you know, square foot gardening style. And uh, they all came up, which I'm shocked about, but it's great. And then, behold the brassicas, looking really great. Um, I'm finally getting into more of the planting schedule that Patrick from the One Yard Revolution channel um, proposed. I started a ton of seeds. I think I started seven flats of seeds this year and was successful for everything that I planted except my peppers, which we'll get to in a second. But the brassicas in my zone here can be planted out two weeks before our average last frost date, which was yesterday, April 30th. So these were planted mid-April, and seriously, they look terrific. We've got, except for the one that snapped in the wind, we had some like 30, 40 mile an hour gusts. I was I thought I was going to lose them all, but I didn't. Um, cabbage, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. And then you may be able to see it in frame, but across the way I just had some extra plants, a hodgepodge, so I put them there together. And of course, as I was hardening these off, uh, a giant gust of wind blew and mixed them all together. So I'm thinking I've got a row of cabbage, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. We'll see. They'll probably be all mixed in between, but whatever. It's okay. Again, it's one per square foot, I think, for these, for the square foot garden. So the garden is going to be massively dense this year, way more so than in years past, but that is what we are moving towards. Here's the one tree that I was talking about that doesn't look like it's pushing out any greenery. It's a Granny Smith. Um, I mean, the limbs are all nice and flexible, so it's not dead dead. Obviously, this where it was pretty badly girdled, this is stiff as a rock, and I wouldn't expect this to have any life, but the stuff that's getting nutrients, I mean, they're still malleable like they should be. We shall see. Um, honestly, I'm going to give it another two weeks since everything else is pushing out greenery, and if this doesn't start to act, it's probably going to get cut, and um, I'm going to spring for a relatively mature tree to put in this place since everything else is four years old. <sighs> this is part of my front yard. You can see the Adirondack chairs that I made and was selling last year. Made a nice hauling on them, and they look great. Obviously, the daffodils, Narcissan, coming up nicely. They've been up for a couple weeks. They are wonderful cutting flowers. They're obviously the first thing to come up in this area, followed by the tulips. I got tulips here, 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 sort of pinks and dark burgundies. Uh, they may still be here in June. Mm, probably not though, but we'll see. We got all sorts of different lilies coming up here and grape hyacinth and yellow loosestrife and um, you name it. Anything that's really good and perennial comes up in the front bed. Um, but we have yet to win a curbside appeal award. What the heck? Neighborhood Association. Well, hi, let's talk about seed starting. This year, I didn't completely suck at it. As you have already heard, my flat of uh, brassicas was already transplanted out, and 15 of the 16 plants that I put out there are looking a-okay, very nice, except for the one that, you know, snapped in the wind. So what do I have here? Well, here we've got a flat of essentially zinnias over here. A small marigold, and these are some last-minute uh, peppers that I started. These are, I'm calling them Jim's Jamboree. Jim from the Midwest Gardener. You should subscribe to his channel if you don't already, because he's a buddy of mine. He sent me some seeds. They're an interesting hybrid. We'll see how they work. We've got... Oh, God! This is a... Oh, my dog. This is a flat of uh, sunflowers. Now, of course, you don't have to start those ahead of time, but it's an experiment for me because I have slug problems. And those suckers almost always get most of my sunflowers. So I'm thinking if I start them and they get strong and they get tall and I plant them in ground in different areas, hopefully the slugs won't get to them and they'll be more mature faster than they would have been otherwise. Fingers crossed. Over there, I just started those like two weeks ago. They're just an assortment of flowers and some dill. This is, um, what, cilantro, basil. Mmm, basil looks beautiful. Um, I got some ground cherries, which are essentially weeds if you don't control them. So once those actually come up, and they're taking forever, once they 
come up. Here's the most mature one. These will go in one of those half barrels that we saw earlier, the plastic ones, because I, I don't care if the roots go crazy and I, they drop a ton of seed and they self seed for next year. In fact, I kind of want that to be the case because they will always live in one barrel and they can go crazy. Hey, here's a whole assortment of squash. I'm not going to lift the whole flat up because it's really, really heavy, but I'll just show you like one particular plant. Look at that. They're so nice and uh, thick stalked, like a whole centimeter in diameter. They look really, really beautiful. What is this? This is... Well, this is a cornfield pumpkin, of course. I'm trying an array of different squashes this year. This disgustingly heavy flat here is all tomatoes, five different types. And uh, they might look a little sickly, again, to the untrained eye, because, of course, I let them sit for a little bit too long right against my grow lights. So we've got burned leaves here. And they're getting pretty tall, which means that they're falling over. They're all indeterminate, so they'll be like eight feet tall, you know, this year. So they're kind of falling over and being self-supportive of each other. I can't wait to actually get them in the ground. Like this one here, which is a tomatillo, is already over a foot tall. It's like... 14 inches tall, so once I plant that in the ground and get it staked up, this sucker's just gonna go Fachoo! I'm pleased. Con considering what I had done in years past, last year I think only three of my tomato plants survived, and they were like a translucent white stem, and it took them a month to get going on anything. Um, I'm doing so many things differently this year that are successful. I'm very happy. I alluded earlier to uh, only not being successful with my pepper seeds, and that's true. So a subscriber, Kevin M, uh, reached out to me. He had reached out for something else a year prior, and he just he remembered me, and he thought of me. And he said, hey, I started a whole bunch of extra seeds of X, Y, and Z variety, including peppers, which I needed. So yes, I said, yes, I'll take you up in your offer to take some peppers. Uh, that's really generous. I could use maybe a dozen I was going to get from our local nursery. He picked out 21 for me and he dropped them off on my porch. I haven't even met the guy yet to say thanks because, you know, social distancing and stuff. But, uh, so thanks, Kevin. Look at these. Talk, talk about upping my seed game. Like, I'm impressed by myself. I was all gung-ho about how well I'm doing. And then he comes with these, like, six-inch pots of these beautiful-looking peppers. Ah, so exciting. This is where I want to be in three years with all my plants. So, I'm trending that way. Thank you, Kevin. You're an inspiration. This collection of green things, these are lilacs, you know. I trimmed them. I, I hacked them down three years ago. They were a monstrosity, like 14 feet tall or so, and I hacked them down to, like, eye level, so six feet at most. And they really haven't been producing a lot of flowers. Last year we had a few. Um, but this year, it's like, blah, it's an explosion of green things everywhere. And not just at the top, where I was expecting it, but also at like the three foot level and up. So it's filling in, which is cool. We usually have lilacs in bloom around my mother's birthday, so May 24th. Happy birthday, mother. Also, my mother-in-law's birthday, my oldest sister-in-law and aunt-in-law are all the 20th, 22nd, and then 24th from my mom. So it's like... Yay, women in our family week. You get some lilacs this year. And this is where I'm going to leave you in the final section. We planted this all in the fall. Again, this is uh, stuff I got from mom's yard before she sold her house. Uh, it's a whole collection. All these chunks here are flocks. I think at least two different varieties. So they're going to be, you know, yay tall with different pinks and purples. It'll fill up this entire space. It's going to look awesome. And we have just some native uh, tiger lilies back here. So we're going to have, you know, four, three, four foot tall, giant orange flowered things growing. And then when those are done, the flocks take over. So it's going to really be a beautiful corner. You right now are standing on our fire pit. So just imagine the middle of July hanging out out here, having a fire and, and looking at all my beautiful flowers. It's a cool thing. Should I say hi? Yeah, so once again, my name's Christopher. This is my daughter Charlotte. You haven't met her yet, but I mean, this is my daughter Charlotte. That's what's growing in Wisconsin, or at least here in Oshkosh. I hope you enjoyed it. This is how the format's going to be. Kind of sarcastic, but I'm having a good day, and, you know, everybody's out, so that's great. Hope you're quarantining and stuff, and uh, have have a good one. Okay, we'll see you at the beginning of June. Charlotte, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.